Kia ora e te whana nā mai hari mai, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Welcome to Maita 10 Park and Here Tonga Hastings for the New Zealand Secondary School Canoe Polo Championships for 2023. And I tell you what, conditions could not be better. Blue skies and sunshine, hardly a cloud in the sky. At the moment it's 14 degrees but we're predicting the temperature to get close to 23. No wind around to speak of. It is going to be an absolute ripper of two days of competition. And I'm joined in co-commentary with Hayley Austin. Morena Hayley, welcome in my friend. Great to have you on board. Thank you Tim. Kia ora, nice to meet you everybody. And thank you to Fakata Māori Active for streaming this. So, uh, hey Tim, my name is Hayley Austin. I'm fresh into university, so I've played high school polo for Karamu for the past three years, being in all grand finals and the tournament team selection for three consecutive years. I currently am playing for Valkyries Black in women's A grade and have represented New Zealand at Oceania and inter-regional level since 2019. All the years I've played canoe polo, it's been streamed, both high school level and national league, and I've always watched wanted to do this. This is the coolest thing ever. We've got some awesome jam-packed action for everyone watching at home and the teams look good. I have to say the level is outstanding and we've got Napier Boys versus Palmerston North coming up first for you and this is going to be a cracker. How many schools are competing, Hayley? How many schools? Yes. There's about 40. 40, 40 teams, my wow. goodness from all around the Motu, of course. And before we get underway and look at the two teams, Napier Boys High School against Palmerston North Boys High School, just want to do a big shout-out to all the whanau up and down the coast, particularly in Parafati, that have been through the problems that we've all encountered with Cyclone Gabriel. Kia kaha. Right, looking at the two teams, Palmerston North Boys High and Napier Boys High, Ross, Hawkwinkles, Dassler, Patterson, McEwen, Doherty and Jacob, is the starting team there and then on to Napier Boys. We've got Field, Windle, English, Folds, Glenny, Robinson and Palm Quest Dahl as well makes up Napier Boys high. From Manawatu versus Hawks Bay, Haley. it's yes. going to be all on. So look, wherever you happen to be joining us today, we do appreciate your company Strap yourself in, lock and load. We're yep. going to get some great canoe polo action, I can tell you. Yeah, this is going to be a big game. Napier's just done their team cheer. Manawatu versus Hawks Bay is always huge. I feel like that's the main rivalry. Oh, here they go. Lining up. So we've got number eight for the charge, it looks like. Versus number two, it seems, for Palmer's North Boys. Oh, here we go. And here's the charge. The hammer goes down. Oh. Foot to the middle. Who's going to get this? Oh, good push. And Palmer's North ball it is. They come away with it. That was thanks to their number two, the co-captain, Paul Winkles. Looking for a bit of aputa or open space. So we've got Napier boys here. Oh, not Napier boys yet. We've got... The Karakak Kuru, or clock shot, they have 60 seconds with which to find the back of the net. Pressing forward. Up oh and in, first gosh. blood. That goes to Palmerston North Boys High. Wow. What a goal. That was They're on a the board. cracker of a shot. As we can see on the replay, Hayley. Wow, top bar and goalie couldn't really do anything there. Amazing shot there by Palmerston North Boys. So early near nerves settled down with that goal for Palmerston North Boys High School. Let's see what oh. Napier Boys High School can do Loose ball. in terms of reply. Oh, Palmerston North, good. They've got opportunities, but they're going to slow it down, it seems. Yeah, pass to number three. Back in position again, and they're just settling it down. Finding a little bit of space up on that far side. That is Dazzler for Palmerston North boys. He gets it across. Passes it to Hawkins. And, and off they go. Driving forward. That's number five there. That's McEwen, the co-captain. Oh, little dabble off the head. 
bit of white foam there. They go to work. It's take no prisoners at this early stage, <laughs> I tell you. Good block. Yeah, oh, and a push. Oh, the cheeky. Loose ball again. Who wants it? Pedal. That was McEwen. Pedal foul there, so in Knupolo, just going to make sure the pedal is not within a metre between someone's hand, just for safety reasons. A pedal foul or hapa ahoy. Yes. Karaka Kuru, clock shop on the far side. Counts down 30 seconds. Palmerston the North Boys High. One goal to the good. Seven minutes just rolled over in this first half. Oh. And good intercept from Napier Boys. They're coming away with it. There's a bit of open water there. But they picked up the Paora Terure. Number one. And number one field for Napier Boys. What a shot. He equalises. Jaden Field. A good reply from Nate, your boys, as we can see on the replay, Haley. Yes, what a shot. Plenty of space there, and he was able to pull the trigger and find the back of the net. Yep. Pumps the north with the ball now. What are they going to set up? Nate, your boys, got a steady 1-3-1 one, one defence. All tied up, one all, first half. Palmerston north boys high versus Nate, your boys high. Senior open grade. Here at Maritim Park in Here Tonga Hastings, the biggest canoe polo park in Oceania. What a magnificent facility it is. Whether it's playing its part. And here comes oh. Palmerton. Oh, Palmerton North off. Boys High just pulling the trigger on that far side. Just going off the middle work. Oh, what a good pass. Here comes Nate, your boys. Passing it to field. Field dribbles. Finding a little bit of space. That goes to Glenny. Goes back to field. Oh, Palmerston North on the charge. Still in position, Nate, your boys. Finding some space oh. and in. Field, what a cracker. Even the goalie's pedal couldn't stop that one. Second goal this morning for Jaden Field for Napier Boys High School. Let's have a look at the replay, Hayley. Yep. Oh, great pass over. Straight to hands. Winds it up. A oh. little bit of deflection, bit of in off there as well, my friend. Yes. And this is live and exclusive on the YouTube channel, thanks to Fakata Māori. Maori active. Kia ora. Look at that white water. They're getting down to work there. They're <laughs> the jockeying for position, hard. aren't they? My goodness, look at that. Opportunity blocked. Palmerston North Boys high on the attack. They're one behind. Whistle gone. Corner on that far side. Oh, off the side off of the Off the net. side, quite deceptive. But the ball gets handed to Nate, your boys, to come away with it. Quick subs. See if they can add to their lead. And so, Windle on with the ball there. Glitty on this far side. Ryland Glenny. Trying to find space. Oh. Linked up nicely. Lean back and just off the metal. Good opportunity. And corner ball there. On this near side. A paora coconut or corner. Let's see what they can do. There's the lob going back into the middle of the pitch. Passes it to Tom Hawkins. Now you boys have it.
just taking their time. They get it across to Glenny. Feeds it on. Good interchange there. That's oh. English. Lines oh. up and just over the just top. Over the top. Great top. effort though. That was Jacob English in the number four for Napier boys. Putting shots on goal. It's all about the numbers, isn't it? You know, you've got to swing the bat, Hayley. Is that yep, right? Swing the bat right. and you give yourself a chance. Yeah. If in doubt, pull the trigger. <laughs> Yep, and these boys, well, you can't see at home, Fano, but their muscles, massive. The power on these shots are next to nothing. And, and the core for all the players to be able to sit in a boat that's moving and fire it at the goal. Just an incredible amount of energy and effort and commitment to do this. Amazing. So 2-1 it is at the moment. Under two minutes till half time in this first game. Make your boys high to the good. Oh, That's an equaliser wow. right there from Palmerston North Boys High. And we'll see on the replay, it looked pretty simple stuff. Just laid it down. Waiting. Good interchange, Hayley. What a shot from Liam McGowan, the co-captain. They took their time there. And they... All tied up to a oh. piece. Back to Palmerston North boys. Good little pass. Going to lob it over. Coming again. They want to go to the sheds. Run to the good if they possibly can. Palmerston North boys high. Napier boys have stopped them well. Meaning they need a pass back. They've set up a good defence. Just taking their time. Palmerston North boys high. Good interchange. That was... Paul Winkles on this near side, co-captain, dribbling it forward, Dazzler, oh, pitch and roll nearly, oh, blocked. Good pulled block. the trigger, that was Paul Winkles again, leading from the front, the co-captain, and Napier Boys High School come away with it, not a fast break, but a bit of acceleration down the pitch there. Tain falls on that far side. Oh, what a feed. Ten seconds left on oh this first half. Oh, my gosh. That was outrageous. What a goal. Let's look on the replay, Haley. Talk me through this. So there's a good feed. He's looked around. A fake feed. Options always there. Oh, my gosh. Top bar in. And that was number eight. Palmquist Dahl, the captain for Napier Boys. So that means they are ahead 3-2 to two at halftime here in the first game in the senior open grade. Napier Boys High School against Palmerston North Boys High School. Well, this is going to be a close one. I already feel it. I tell you what, <laughs> if this is the benchmark, if this is the standard, we are in for a heck of a tournament right we here. We are, Ailey. yeah. Amazing. So both teams evenly matched, 3-2 to two at halftime. Napier Boys High School and Palmerston North Boys High School. They've swapped ends. Napier Boys on the right on the screen as you are watching. And Palmerston North Boys on the left. You've got a good charge start from Napier Boys and Palmerston North Boys. Looks like number two for Palmerston North Boys. Here's the countdown. There it is. The ball being thrown into the centre of the pitch. And we are away five. from the second half. The charge, oh, always exciting. What a take there. Palmerston num North Boys number High. Two, Tom Hawkins. Oh. The co-captain co there for Palmerston North Boys High. Thank you. Hard Mahi going in from Palmerston North, trying to break that defence, but Napier boys are holding strong. Here's Palmerston North boys pressing forward, courtesy of their number five, Liam McEwen. Good defence by Napier. Doherty. I beg your pardon, Jacob there. Oscar Jacob in the number seven. He had it briefly. Oh, number five going out. Steaming in. Side shot blocked. That was good defence by Glenny for Napier Boys. Ball loose. Napier Boys come away with it. 
A chance just to pause and reset. Field's ball. Jaden Field. Pops it to that far side. Trying to find the reverse oh, thrust. Tane falls. Ball loose. A bit of Paoro Taruri there for Palmerston North Boys High. And they're able to just take a moment and reset. Courtesy of Patterson. Brings it to this near side. That is Doherty for Palmerston North Boys. Back to Peterson. And blocked. Ball loose. Navy boys come away with oh. it. Bit of a fast break there. Who wants it on that far side? Tane folds with the ball. Let's see what he can do. Left oh. arm up and not quite able to get it in the back of the net. Ball still loose. Napier boys pitch and roll. Another oh. shot. Outstanding goal. Still with Napier boys. They're having a look. They're trying to find space to get themselves reset. Pumquist styles ball. Where's he going? Over the head. That's great play there. That went to Windle. He goes across to Roberts. And they're just taking a moment or two across to Glenny. Plenty of time on the Karakakuru, the shot clock. No need to panic for Napier boys. They're looking for the equaliser. We've got Palm Costal working on that number four. Three it's minutes gone in the second half. Bringing it forward now. The numbers are starting to run down there on the Karakakuru, the clock shot. Palmerston North boys come away and with we've it. Got a, we've got a reset. We've got a hapa, we've got a foul. Yes. So the Karakakuru, the clock shot, is reset. I'm going to get that round the right way. Shot clock. <laughs> Gets me every time. <laughs> I was letting he rolls it. <laughs> Here oh, we go. Glenny. Nope, your boys. Oh. Blocked again. My goodness. Wow. Passes a bit to Palm Quest Dow. Back to Window. Nope, your boys just taking a breather, getting themselves set to press forward. And find a little bit of space Window close the to ball. the goal. Here they go. It's a bit stuck. Where's he going? Little little drop pass there. That was tidy. That went to Povey. Oh. I beg your pardon, McCourt. And that was a goal. Yes, it was a goal. Was a goal. Yes. Let's have a look at the replay. No, we're underway. The action's thick and fast right here, I tell you. No time for a replay. Palmerston North boys trying to get that extra point to get close to Napier boys who are 4-2 to the good. McEwen driving forward from the back. Leaning, leaning, flicking it out the side. Oh. That's gone to Hallwinkles, the co-captain. Ball loose. Still with Palmerston North boys. And the shot blocked, and that may be... No, I thought it might have been a for order coconut, but it's not. So it's just a pass. And Nate, your boys come away with it. Four to the good, under five minutes left. Here goes Field. In this game. Blocked. And... Whistle corner. goes. Only four minutes, 20 left, 4-2. It's anyone's game, and the skill shown here is outstanding. Here's Napier your boys. Off the side. Ball to Palmerston North Boys High School. They're behind by two. Plenty of time left in this game. Four minutes is a long time in Poro Waka, Canoe Polo. Palmerston North Boys High bringing it forward. 
Lining, lining up, but not quite able to execute at that stage. And that was again Paul Winkles, the co-captain, who has been prominent in this game. Ross with the corner from Palms North Boys. What Magic is going to do with it. And he goes safely out. Straight to, to the middle, yes. That is Pedersen. Uh, McEwen, the co-captain. Leaning back. Oh, wow. And that was number five from Palmerston North Boys. That is Liam McEwen, the co-captain. We'll get a replay on that. A bit of a skip ball. Picks it up. Leads back. Oh, fake. Oh, lovely. That was good interchange, wasn't it? Yep, absolutely lovely. McEwen taking Palmerston North Boys high. Three to four. Napier Boys High School. Won the advantage, but plenty of time left. Just under three minutes left in this game. Napier boys just being comfortable with the ball in front of them and bringing it forward to attempt to extend oh. the lead. Oh. And they do. Tane folds for Napier boys. What a shot. He just slid in there, as we'll see in the replay. No one's looking at him. Off he goes. Oh. What a slide. Field's looking for it, but he does it all himself. What a shot. What Nailed a shot. It. And uh, if my eyesight doesn't deceive me, I think it was a southpaw left-hander it almost looked like. So 5-3. Napier boys over Palmerston, North boys high. What a rivalry. What a competition across all different sporting codes between these two proud secondary schools. And this just adds to the history of the competition between these two schools. Now, your boys aren't done. Under two minutes left. They're sitting quite comfortable, but two goals can happen rather quickly in the sport. Oh, really? Oh, just over. Yep. Oh, okay. They were doing a bit of a Hail Mary, weren't they? Yeah, but yeah, two goals. Yeah, they were looking for a nothing. downtown Tony Brown and going long. <laughs> just too many wheat bicks there for Glennie, but I'm sure we'll have plenty of opportunities soon. You can never have too many wheat bicks, can you? <laughs> the breakfast of champions. <laughs> Righto, Palmerston North boys high. They want to finish on a high for sure. Let's see what they can do. McEwen's Under ball. a minute left. Up oh. and he's nailed it, he's nailed it! Number five, McEwen, he's on fire! Someone phone one, one, one! <laughs> Shucks! Okay. That takes the score to 4 5, right? Yeah. Interesting. We, uh, the clock's the replay. still running down, though. Here we go. The clock's. Oh. Are we going to see an equaliser? This is Poro Waka oh. at its oh. best. Hope your boys in possession. Less than 30 seconds rolling down. It's ticking, it's ticking, it's ticking. Nope, your boys won't be in any hurry. No. They'll be just running the clock down and making sure that there's oh, no opportunity a for a fast break for Palmerston North Boys High. And but they've got it though. Is there any open water in front of them? Oh. Hapa, that's a foul. It's a foul, yep. No, I'll put that for them to get a piece of. And that's three, two, one. Final whistle. And there it is. It's all over in the first game here at Mitre 10 Park in Here Tonga Hastings. Nate, your boys high. They have victorious over Palmerston North Boys High. Five to four. What a game, Haley. What a game that was. It was down to the wire. You never really knew who was going to win. And that's, that's what we like to see. So now next game, we've got Karamu versus... Fielding. Oh, wow. This is going to be a cracker. This is going to be another cracker. And so the action comes thick and fast. It, it travels along so quickly because so once the team's done, mm -hmm. they get out of the water, go to the yep. back of the pitch, and the other team comes on, gets a little bit of a warm-up going, yep. and then straight into it. No delaying and downing. This is the great thing about the sport. Yep. It's at pace, it's at speed, and it's non-stop action. So if you are joining us for the first time, live and exclusive on the YouTube channel, thanks to Fakata Māori, big kia ora, and welcome in. This is Pura Waka, Canoe Polo.
outstanding action. And this is the best talent that you will see in Aotearoa. That's right, throughout the motu, this is what you will see, these young people, the tamariki, doing so well. And each year it gets bigger and better and stronger and brighter. And one day these people will have a goal of wearing the silver fern, I'm sure. Yeah, 100%. That's mostly everyone's goal. But some, some already, don't think anyone here, or we've got... Looks like actually Karamu. It suggests, is that Karamu High School? Yes. yes. Karamu on the right. They're in the green. And on the left hand side, it would be. Fielding. Got the old fags. Fielding High School boys. Fielding. Just warming up at the moment. Getting a feel for the conditions which are nigh on perfect. As I touched on before, expecting fine weather. The whole day here at Mighty Ten Park in Here Tonga in Hastings. So each each team just doing their 45 drives, warming their arms up, making sure all their balls go to hands and making sure those shots go in for the game. 23 seconds on the clock, so both teams going to line up for the charge. Righto. Normally we have a ring in the middle, but conditions don't allow that quite. So we're doing the old-fashioned way of throwing the ball in, but we still get the excitement of the charge. So we've got Burns all for Karamu. And here Versus we go. Jensen the ball's fielding. tossed in. Who's going to get the it? Pace. Who wants it? Who wants it? Who wants it? Fielding, it looks like. As Noah Jensen with the wheels. He showed a lot of gas there. More toe than a Roman sandal, I tell you. <laughs> and he's got the ball back and back again to him. Surveying options. Passes it to number two from Buckman to Jensen to Weston. Oh, block. and a good, good defense from Karamu. Good block. Yeah, for sure. <coughs> so I've got Buckman who's taking the corner from Fielding High School. The Paora Kokona is the ball into the midfield, across to that far side. Oh. Oh my gosh! And that was Kai Alcock, the captain of Fielding High School. What a banger that was. We'll see it on the replay. That went corner, corner in. He's the Kaitaki, the captain of Fielding High School. And they are to the good by one in this first half. Colbeck between Karamu ball. High School and Fielding High School. Paddles going nine to the dozen. Lean back grabs it for Karamu. Passes it to Arcus. That was Hughes. Toby Hughes. Fielding pushing out. Yeah. Arcus just holding and surveying options. Gets it across to that far side to Colbeck. What a steal from Kai Alcock. Jensen to Kai. Almost a fast break for fielding high. Hughes denies. Gets a little pushover. Passes it to Colbeck, the captain. Oh, that looked a bit of a push in the back there, but unnoticed. All's fear and love and war, they say, Haley. Yep, Kai Alcock. Lofted over, steaming Going onto to it. Buckman. That is Buckman looking likely, trying to link up, and just not quite going to hand. And the intercept from Karamu, good. And they just settle it down, trying to get players forward to find the space, get the feed going before the defenders can get under the goal. Bringing it to this near side. 
That's Arcus. Just keeping it in front of him. Nice tactics. A bit of jockeying for position under the goal there. Hughes you with the ball now. Start to see the paddles fly and the white water froth up. Fielding High School ahead by one. Getting close to the halfway mark of this first half. And a block. Ball popped over the top. Alcox ball. Good lofted drive on that far side and steaming up. Over to Gray. Yeah, Gray. That is Scotty Gray. And a good block from Arcus there. Colbeck kept him with the ball, passes off Hughes. And good, good. comeback from Kadamu. I've got to say, Kadamu are defending really well, Haley, aren't they? they? Are. They're yep. scrambling, but they're defending <laughs> very well. Okay. Showing a lot of ticker. Doing the mahi. Yeah, hopefully they get the treats. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll know after 20 minutes, won't we? Goodness me. Righto, Kadamu. In possession, that's Hughes. Finding space on that far side, nearly an intercept. It is. Oh it my is. gosh, good work from number five, Riley Anderson. A great steal. He's waiting for the cavalry to arrive, and it does so. And that is in the form of Scott Gray. Brings it across to this near side, and that is Weston. Fielding high school, pressing on. They are one ahead, and they're looking to add to that right now. Weston. Across to Alcock. Here's the Kaitaki. Sneaky little pass. Can he get the Ooh. shot away? Inside oh, ball. Lead. Leaning back. Up oh. and blocked. Good defense again from Karamu. Outstanding. They pounce on that Paoro Taruri, the loose ball. And they're good on the Arai, the block. Just settling it down. It's a real arm wrestle in this first half, Haley. I tell you. Yeah. Put in some hard work in the mahi. Far out. Oh, that's a hapa. That's a foul against Kadamu. So fielding ball. Did you see exactly what it was for, Haley? Uh no. Sorry. No. <laughs> oh, what a goal! My gosh! What a goal! I'll tell you what, Tom Brady would have been proud with that arm. <laughs> Let's have a look at the replay. I think we've got it. Oh, we've Talk got Talk me a through replay. this, Haley. Okay. Number seven is that, it looks like Kai Alcock, no one in, so he's going for it. And wow. And do you know what he did in the terms of the technique? He didn't go for the smash. He did a yep. lob, right? Yes. So he aimed high and let the ball drop into the net. And what a goal. That is the equaliser. Fantastic. Good block. Marcus with the ball from Kadamu, passes it out. Bit of a flip and a roll. I apologise. It's the score is actually two nil. 2-0 to Fielding High School. What can Kanamu do about that? Oh, denied from Napier boys. Good defence there. I got myself confused in the excitement. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to feature Tom Brady's name in the commentary. <laughs> anyway, look at this. The white water's there. How cool. Ball loose coming forward. Kanamu, they want to get on the board. That is Fielding's ball. Ball just went a little bit over the top there, so Fielding will get the ball back and have another opportunity to get a goal. Under three minutes left in this first half. Fielding High School in the black. Left to right on the screen as you see them. Kadamu defence working hard. Alcock with the ball. Ah, oh, Alcock. Slip. Is he going to look for it? And he feeds to Scott Gray. 
blocked. Oh, Good defence again from Karamu. That is a Poora Coconut or Corner. Brought in now to the middle. Fielding high. Pressing on. That was Arcus. I beg your pardon. Jensen. Wow. And <laughs> drilled in 100%. No two ways about it. No <laughs> beg your pardons or thank yous there. And that was number three, Kai Orcock. And he is the Kaitaki, the captain of Fielding High School. He's had a crack over a game so far. He has, and that takes him 3-0 up with getting close to just a minute left in this first half. Outstanding secondary school. Canoe polo action. Poro Waka here from Maritin Park in Here Tonga in Hastings. In position, Karamu trying to get on the board. They've defended so well. And they will be keen to get a score. Arkas going for that ball. Scott Gray pushing him out. What's going to do with it? Oh, unlucky. Oh, that's a Hapa, that's a foul. Karamu's ball with just under 10 seconds left. Let's see if they can convert it and do something. The Karaka Kuru, the shot clock ticking down and blocked. Oh, wow. And that is it. That is half time. Fielding High School ahead 3 0 over Karamu, the local college in Here Tonga Hastings. Karamu have defended very, very well because there have been a number of shots on goal. So, Karamu, what do you think that they will be focusing on in this second half, Hayley? Uh, just some more cleanliness with their attack. They seem to be fast broken all the time. So a fast break is when there's no defence and there's just one person dribbling it and dribbling it. So we saw that a lot in the Napier Boys game, but it's happening quite a lot in this game. They seem to clean up their passes as well. But honestly, the, the both teams are doing so well in fielding. Kai Alcock's just on fire. <laughs> and look, they won't want to sit on their lead too. They will want to yep. press on and get another 100%. two or three goals in the bank just to give them that breathing space, right? 100%. So they're just going to go hard. Fielding looking good for this tournament, so I want to get their goal difference up as much as possible. Here's the throw in. We've got Kai Alcock versus Arcus. Whose ball is it? The charge. And Beautifully taken. Beautifully taken there. An advantage there for an illegal push. And that was Alcock that came away with it for fielding high. They're on the right hand of your screen as you're watching. And we do welcome you in and thank you for your company. It's great to have you on board. And big shout out to Fakata Māori, Māori Active, for bringing you these exclusive pictures live on the YouTube channel. Kia ora. Early stages of the second half. Fielding High School looking to press on. They're three ahead. Oh, Karamu's ball. Turned over. Here's a bit of a fast break. Karamu, what can they do? Oh, what a pass. That's a backhanded <laughs> flip. That was over oh awesome. Oh, going for leaning the shot, back, Leaning back, leaning back. Yes! Woohoo! That is number one, Arcus for Karamu High School. What a shot. Lobbed it in. Just needed, did what needed to be done. It was C, our replay there. Does a dribble, has a look, no one's in, why not, off he goes, he's got the arm and the power. And again, aimed high so the drop of the ball took yes. it into the net, rather than trying to smash it at 150 kilometres an hour. Great technique there by Oliver Arcus for Karamu, they are on the board, 3-1. Anyone's game now with 8 minutes 30 left on this game? You betcha. Space in the middle for fielding high. Riley Anderson had it there, and he pops it to the far side to Gray. Back to Anderson. Just settling down. Three at the back here, looking for space on this near side. And the number seven, Luke Povey. The hammer goes down. Toss into the middle, onto that far side. A little of a lead back. 
not enough room to pull the trigger, but it goes in nonetheless. And that to me looked like number five, was it? Uh, yes. Riley Anderson? Let's yes, have a look. Oh, off the bar, that was number five. I tell you what, he was pivoting down under the water as well after he, he completed that shot. That takes Fielding High School ahead by three goals. Four to one over Karamu High School. Karamu's still going hard though, not letting the scoreline defend them. It's Hughes. Toby Hughes. Has he got the right angle? No. Intercepted. Fielding High School. Come away with it. Finding space oh, on this near side. A little fast bit. Fast break coming up. A little bit of open water. Oh, good push from Blaze Colby. Bit of up the with up. Great defence. Whoa, that's a real aggressive <laughs> defence there. The referee spotted it. All these games played in good spirit, but no quarter given and no quarter asked, as you would expect. It is finals. It's not about earning the right to play next week. It's all on the line here this weekend. And cut a move. Three goals the difference. Six and a half minutes left. Oh! That was a Falcon <laughs> kind of off the shoulder, one might say. But Karamu still has it. Hughes lofting in the middle. That's a good pass there to Burgess. Lining it up and just off the middle. Oh, and that's a hopper. That is so a double blast of the whistle. Talk us through that, Hayley. So that was a paddle foul. So that means his paddle would have been too close when he was shooting. So, so that's, that's a hopper. A whore. So let's see where this ends up for Karamu. Referee on that far side just telling him exactly where he wants him positioned. And we're away again. Having a drive. Cheeky look. Cheeky look. And that results in a pa'oro coconut for Karamu. On that far side, plenty of time left on the Karaka Kuru, the shot clock. Karamu. What can they do? Here they come. They're wanting to find three goals. Take Ooh, the steps for hit. time. Having a look, leaning back, ah, just over the top. The option was correct, and it was a great effort there by number one, Oliver Arcus. Unfortunately for Karamu, not quite in the net, and it gives the chance to Fielding High School just to pause, reset, take a deep breath, yep. and get themselves focused to defend this lead with less than five minutes left in this first half. 100%. They'll just be wanting to... Waste that shot clock down now. Take their time. Just relax. Oh, I contradict myself and off they go. Fielding High School. They're here to play today. Oh, No intercept. two ways. Good job by Oliver Arcus. Karamu, come away with it. Up over the top. Finding space there to Toby Hughes, who pops it on to Colback. Oh, Driving forward, Karamu. Can they find another goal? Leaning back and in. Oh! That is a great goal by Karamu. That's number two, Riley Burgess. We'll see. For the local high school. What a feed by Colbeck. And perfect. But it's exactly what you want. And Colbeck is the Kaitaki of Karamu. He's their captain. And leading from the front. Four to two, under four minutes rolling past in the second half. Two, four. Kind of have really made the comeback of the century here. They certainly have. Poro Waka at its best. Fielding High School just pausing. Now they drive forward. That was Jensen. Still in possession, leading under and oh. just off the bar. That was Buckman for Fielding High School. So Karamu still with an opportunity. What can they conjure up in these last few minutes? Can they take it to extra time? That's Toby Hughes with the ball right now. 
surveying options, trying to get his teammates positioned so he can throw the in ball to give them a chance to pull the trigger and get the ball in the back of the net. And uh, a little bit foul. untidy, and that's resulted in Fielding High School coming away with it. Calm, collected, composed, and considered with their moves. And here they are looking to <laughs> finish it off. And that is number three for Fielding High School. That is Kai Orcock, the captain. See on that replay there. Lines it up. Perfect in the top right corner. That means Fielding extend their lead to 5-2. Well, that's very comfortable. You have to say for them right now with three goals, the difference. And getting close to two minutes left in this game. Karamu have defended so magnificently under the goal, but they just haven't been able to execute in terms of getting the ball in the back of the net where they when they wanted to. Such is the nature of this wonderful sport. Karamu. Less than two minutes left. Arcus. Feed. Untidy in the middle there. Oh, Fielding good High School. Handle for cross. Trying to find a bit of space there and powering onto the ball for Fielding High School is their oh, captain, here we go. Kai Elcott. Here's Scott Gray. Open. Scotty Gray, open net. Calm as you like. Beautiful. Nailed it. Didn't try and punch it in too hard. He did a netball pass and kept calm and composed and just, yeah, lobbed it in. Here we are, Haley. Look. Beautiful. Cool, calm and collected. No need for a hard shot. No need to show off. Just get it in. And they extend their lead 6 2 with a minute to go. Woo! Fielding have hit the ground running. And that was from a turnover, from a mistake from Karamu, unfortunately. Loose and ball. another foul. Another foul. Missed that, what that was actually for. That Hayley. was a goalie foul. So that means. Which is a hopper? Yes. Fielding High School not done. They look dangerous. They're wanting another. Scott Gray. Scott Gray tosses it inside. Leaning back, leaning back, pulling. Not quite the trigger at that stage. Karamu. Can they get a fast break going? Have they got anyone forward that can feed? On that far side for Karamu is number seven, and that is Toby Hughes. He's the player they need to find. Passes it off to Colbeck, the captain. Colbeck, a little bit untidy. Pressure coming on. Handles that pressure well. Lofts it over. Two players on that far side able to take advantage of that pass. One of them is Arcus. He has the ball in front of him. Just nine seconds to go. Shot coming. Can they finish on a high? Drives blocks. And that is it. Time called 6-2. to two. Fielding High School over Karamu High School. What a game. Fielding domination. They played really well. Kudamu, really good sportsman for Kudamu. They didn't give up. They still tried to the very last minute, having a last second shot. But Fielding High School, their captain, Kai Alcock, their Kaitaki, he was certainly leading from the front. Outstanding effort from him. But good sportsmanship from both teams. Certainly very competitive out there on the pitch. A lot of jostling for position, and that's what you'd expect in a game of of this level, wouldn't you, Hayley? 100%. There's no point giving up because you never know what could happen. Wow, it just comes thick and fast. It, I mean, I don't know what the players are feeling, but us as commentators, there's hardly a moment <laughs> to breathe, right? <laughs> yeah, and that's exactly what it's like. That's yeah. why the halves are only 10 minutes because it's just high intensity. Imagine doing that for half an hour. Oh, my gosh, you just couldn't. You couldn't sustain it, right? No, no, no way. No. Hey, look, the great thing with the sport too, as I understand it, is that players are able to fit other sports around it as well. And then when yes. they get to a point where they want to commit to one, that happens. But yep. I've spoken to a number of players that they're able to fit other sports, which is, which is great because variety is the spice of life, someone once said. Yes. Well, as you can see, canoe polo is all about upper body. So... We recommend as <laughs> sports people to also mix it with a lower body sport like sure. rugby or netball or football just because you're sitting down, not doing much with the legs. <laughs> what about buffet? That's not a sport, is it? A buffet? Buffet, like the food you eat? Yeah, that's not a sport, <laughs> is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm aiming that at me, Hayley. <laughs> Here we've got our next game. We've got St. John's College, which is another Hawke's Bay team versus Shirley Boys High School. And St. John's are in the crimson. Yes. On the left-hand side of your screen at this stage. And Shirley Boy, Boys High School, they are in the black tops and the blue vests. Yep. Yellow and blue. You can't miss them. Oh, what a cracker of a day. The <laughs> weather is just being put on for it. Right, another ripper of a game. Lined up. St John's College from Hawke's Bay, from Hastings, and against Christ Christchurch, uh, sending us their best in Shirley Boys High School. Yeah. So shout out to all the Fano and Christchurch that may be watching this live and exclusive, exclusive on YouTube. Thanks to Fakata Maori. Actually, the Christchurch area has had a bit of fun lately with the Sail GP last weekend. Do you like sailing? Yes, I do like sailing, actually. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Oh. Here's the drive. Oh, my gosh. Look at the pace. The speed. Where's the ball? Where's the ball? It is with Shirley Boys High. With their captain, Bowen Abraham. Here's the Kaitaki. And here they go to work. These... Tane driving forward into the middle. They look Little dangerous. hand pedal. Oh, what a feed. Inside, up and over and blocked. Great defence under the goal by St. John's, I tell you. That was outstanding. And both teams have started strong. Full effort from the get-go. We're only not even one minute into it. Now, that's resulted, I believe, with a paora coconut. A corner on that far side. And if we have a look at the Karakakuru, the shot clock. Good defence at John's. That's twice in the last 30 seconds they've blocked. Oh, but a steal. Incredible. What can they do with it? Oh, blocked again. Unlucky. Three on goal, three defence blocks. How good the D of St. John's. <laughs> Roly poly on that far <laughs> side, down and up and out, and there's the ball. That was awesome work from Khan Smith, the captain, taking that pressure and just getting a safe pass off. Clearly not his first rodeo. No, not the first time he's been chucked over. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be the last this weekend, I'm no. sure. Right, so John's just having a breather after that frantic start. They were on D, hard out, three shots on goal. They didn't let any in. And we're nearly three minutes into this first half. St. John's on the left of your screen in the crimson and Shirley Boys High, blue vest and black tops from Christchurch on the right. They're defending right now. St. John's driving oh, and wow. that's a great goal for the local side. That was number two, Khan Smith. Have a look at our replay. Ask for it. Leans back. Beautiful. Here's the Kaitaki, the captain of St. John's. Outstanding effort leading from the front. St. John's after all the D, they take the early lead, 1-0 over Shirley Boys High School. Saint, Shirley Boys, they're Saint looking to strike back. That was Reuben Brown. Cherry. Cherry still with the ball. Feed. Gets it inside to Brown. Up and over. Brown not able to deliver just at that point in time. But still on the right end of the pitch, Shirley Boys High School. Shirley Boys, what they got to do with it? Feed to four. Back of the net for number four, and that is Tom Bishop for Shirley Boys High. You see our replay here. 
feed from five to four. And beautiful shot. All tied up, what a piece. <laughs> Another absolute rip snorter of a game. And we're halfway through the first half. The senior open grade. New Zealand Secondary School Poro Waka Championships. Live and exclusive on the YouTube channel. Big thanks to Fakata Māori and Māori Active for bringing you these wonderful pictures and also the stream shot live. St. John's blocked. Aggressive under the goal. Shirley's ball now. Possible fast break coming. They put the hammer down. Bit of aputa. Speed. Good take. The ball bounces. Where's it going to finish up? Here's Cherry. There's a flip over. No, it's St. John's. Great defense. That was Freddie oh. Salter. <laughs> he lost it in field to Parker. Oh, here we go. Open space. Aputa. Just taking his time there. That is Smith. Khan Smith. Just letting the cavalry arrive. Feeding it back to Albert Parker in the number seven shirt. Stent. Parker. Smith, the Kaitaki for St. John's. Ooh, this near go. side stint oh, has a shot. Good block. Good block. Now that's resulted in a paora coconut on this near side. For St. John's. I beg your pardon, the far side it's gone. And taking it there is number five, Jimmy Brotherton. For St. John's. Pops it to himself. Bringing it forward. Good defence. Smith with the ball. Up oh, and over. Wow. Not even. See on the replay here, he just makes it look so easy. Can't Smith. I thought it might have missed at one stage. <laughs> but no, straight back of the net. Lovely feed. Fake. That's the second one this morning. Beautiful. Here's the Kaitaki of St. John's. They take the lead two to one. Less than three minutes left in this first half. Surely Absolutely boys. outstanding. Put a walk action for you. Right, Shirley boys from Christchurch. They pop it into the middle there. Oh, unlucky. And that was turned over. So that gives St. John's a chance to press forward. And they do so from deep. Rolling close to less than two minutes for this first half. St. John's bringing it up now nice and slow. They've got that lead. Albert Parker brings it across there to Brotherton. Oh, good intercept. <laughs> and here Here's we go. Possible fast break. Far, yeah, exactly. That's Abraham for Shirley Boys High School. Here's the oh, Kaitaki. Here we go. What can he do? It's in front of him. He leans back and just pops it in. And that is a great equaliser for the Kaitaki for Shirley Boys High School. Lovely pass over, nice lob, so you don't get blocked by any pedals. Look at that speed, so much power. Easy, lovely. Bowen Abraham. He gets the equaliser to a piece. Just a bit over a minute left in this first half. Another arm wrestle. <laughs> Goodness gracious. I feel the Christchurch Hawks Bay rivalry coming out. <laughs> Come on the bay. Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> St. John's. 
the local side. What can they pull out of the hat on the stroke of half time? It's Khan Smith. Lofted in, lofted in St. John's. Oh, ball loose. Oh my ball gosh. Loose. Who wants it? St. John's. St. John's. Oh. Pop that. Oh, how did that miss? <laughs> Stop that. Stop that. I thought that was in like so slim. So I. And that's a corner. They've got 20 seconds. So St. John need to get that ball fast. Gee, Willikers. I thought they had that. So did I. The goalie of Shirley Boys. Here we go. St. John's. What have they got? Ooh. Not quite. Off the tin. The steel bounce it back. Do they get another chance before the whistle goes? I think time will run out before they yeah. can pull the trigger. It's up. It's, it's wide. Over. And it's half time. And it's all tied up at two apiece here at Mitre 10 Park in Here Tonga in Hastings. And this is Poro Waka Canoe Polo, the secondary school championships for 2023. Action at its best. Ooh. Two apiece, Hayley. Oh, Two apiece. This is exciting. I love these games. You never know which way it's going to go. So the second half is huge. Both teams going to put that hard mahi in to see who's going to win. And who is going to win? I don't know. Both teams looking so strong. Have you seen anything specific that both teams will be wanting to either shore up or adjust slightly in terms of tactics, Hayley? Uh, well, St. John's, all the goals that have been scored against them have been fast breaks. Mm -hmm. So when they do their attack, they just need to make sure they've got people waiting there in case anyone comes. But for Shirley Boys, I don't know. Shirley Boys doing quite well in my opinion. Here we She's go. all tied up. Here we go. Here's the charge. Who wants it? Shirley, Shirley Boys on the left, St. John's on the right. Wow. Shirley Boys come and take, take away with it. And that is Eli Robertson. For Shirley Boys High School, out of Christchurch, of course, the Garden City of Aotearoa, New Zealand. Far out. He had some wheels on him. Might call him Lightning McQueen next time. Far out. Who is going to score first? Shirley Boys will want to get the ball in the back of the net as soon as they can and press on. Equally, oh, St. John's defended so well foul. in that first half. In the first minute or so, they defended three shots on goal and then got the first goal. So their defence has been up to the task. Shirley boys. For the paddle foul right under the goal. What can they do? There was a hapa ahoy paddle foul against Shirley Boy. Uh, beg your pardon, against St. John's. Shirley boys still in possession. Pressing forward. Good patience from Shirley boys there. They don't need it straight away. That is Cherry. He had it. He's popped it inside. Driving oh, it forward again wow. off the metal work. And he gets it back. He gets the rebound, finding it to his fellow player there. And back, number five. Is he going to have another go? Oh, the feed. Cherry nearly had it. Oh, St. John's got intercepts. St. John's have it. They're trying to find a bit of space here. A bit of aputa. Good hustle there for Shirley Boys. That is number three, Leroy Cherry. St. John ball. Driving it forward. Two players on that far side, and they're able to combine together. And then they're able to press forward the attacking player for St. John's, which is George Stent. And then bringing it forward is Khan Smith. Oh, good feed. Oh. Leaning back. Not quite ball Unlucky. loose. Shirley Boys High come away with it. And just looking calm there. Just pretty relaxed, even though there's a little bit of action. And a good, good block forward there. Nice ball. Here we go. Shirley boys high. Over the top. They get it to it. Brown. Oh, beautiful work. St. John Goldie coming out. He needed to with that situation. Good defence. Lofts oh. it in. And that is number two for Shirley boys high. That is Reuben Brown. And he scores first for his school in the second half. Lovely. Unlucky there by number seven to St. John's. He did the right decision of coming out. And they jump ahead three points to two. Getting the ball up. As we touched on before, marvellous facilities here at yep. Mighty 10 Park in Here Tonga and Hastings. And the scoreboard on the far side now is under cover. 
Yes. You know, this constant development and progression, which is just fantastic for the sport, Hayley. 100%. Normally we play in <laughs> not-so-nice lagoons, or we used to play at the AMP showgrounds here, where they used to have eels. So ah. very nice to have a lovely facility here. And back to the action. Oh, Oh, good. Shirley boys, it's a pitch and roll, and that's a great effort there. Oh, here we go. Another by the number break. five, Bowen Abraham. He's there, Kaitaki. Shut down by St. John's. Cherry. Cherry trying to find space. Lost his paddle. That's good tactics. The goalie comes forward. Just allowing the players to get in position, get the tactics sorted. The Karaka Kuru, the shot clock at 20 seconds. They're going to have to make something happen. Abraham. Oh, beautiful. What a goal. What a goal. Here we see in the replay, number four. Tom Bishop, is it? Number three for Shirley Boys. Number three. And he put the cherry on the cake. <laughs> put that cherry on top to give Shirley Boys a 2-4 lead on St. John's. Still anyone's game here. Over five minutes left. St. John's with the ball now. They're going to want to make something happen. St. John's looking to answer. They need a couple quick. Tries for a feed, but there's nothing there. They're at the right end of the pitch. What have they got? Hustle, drive, blocked. Another bite of the cake. Up and blocked again. Under the goal there was Tom Bishop for Shirley Boys High School. And they come away with it. Pressing on. Oh, lovely work from the captain of St. John's, Khan Smith. Great defence. Shirley Boys high, ahead, 4-2. to two. St. John's. That's Brotherton. Surveying options. Finds Parker. Oh, what are they going to do? Here's There's Khan. a drive. Here's Khan coming forward. Looking. And oh. just up and over. Just too many wheat books. Pulled the trigger. He had a look. But just a bit high. Great opportunity for them, though. St. John's certainly aren't rolling over. The no ball. team ever does, but goodness me, what action. The ball went so far, they're just getting the ball back. Shirley Boys high, head 4 to 2. Under four minutes left in the second half. Brown. Three-pronged attack. Driving forward. Up and blocked. Oh, good defense from St. John's. Very close there. Oh, Shirley Boys on the attack. Oh, Up and riding. And there's a push. Work. Beautiful work, Shirley Boys. Coming away with it there was number six. The Kaitaki Bowen Abraham. And unfortunately, he just pushed it out on the sideline. So now it's St. John's ball again. Three minutes left. Can St. John's find two goals to equalise? Good intercept. Shirley boys again on the defensive end, able to just stay level stay focused and bring it away oh, it. and there's a lob there's a lob oh. and a block and not quite there the goal was open there yep. was no defense there so he no. said well look you know what i'm just going to pop it over and see how the landscape looks <laughs> yeah right the end option. of it right, right option. option two minutes 30 left still anyone's game St. John's, they need to find two goals in close to two minutes. They've defended well. Let's see what their offense is like. This is when it needs to deliver. Parker, 
coming forward. That's Smith. Blocked. Ball loosed. Back to Parker. Oh, Again off the off metal the work. And look, the shots unfortunately just didn't go where they needed them to go for St. John's. And Shirley boys are able to just take a breather. Settle it down, courtesy of Bowen Abraham, who is the Kaitaki. And he is certainly led from the front. Under two minutes left. Getting close to the one minute countdown. Shirley Boys. Oh. Brown. Look. Oh, good defense. Still in these last Saint John's, minutes. What can they do? Oh, here we go. Here is a little bit of. Here's a fight to the end. Paoro Taruri, open water. Let's see what they can do. And close. <gasps> oh my gosh. <gasps> so we've got a GPS here. A GPS is an open goal. Now, what caused that, Haley? Uh, well, number five had the ball for St. John's, and number six deliberately leant on him and took him under the water to make sure they had no time to get up and shoot. That will be a yellow card for Shirley Boys as well. So it ends up five playing four. Yep. Yeah, leaving the pitch there, I think, for Shirley Boys is number six. Here we go. Eli Robertson, can let's see what it? they can do. Oh, blocked! Shirley Boys got the ball. Less than 30 seconds left. Rolling now. St. John's running a press. Good hustle from St. John's. Whistle goes. A little bit too little Shirley late. Boys High School from Christchurch have this game at four to two. Seconds left. They may even get a third if they want it. <laughs> they have a go. It's battered away. The clock rolls down. There's the final whistle. And congratulations, Shirley Boys High School, taking this game four goals to two. 100%. What a game. Great defence by St. John's in the early stanza of the game. They blocked three goals, one after the other, it seemed. But in the end, Shirley Boys High School just good on the turnover and able to get... The ball in the back of the net when it was needed. So congratulations, Shirley Boys High School. A couple of rip-roaring games to start oh the gosh. day for us. Woo. And forever, forever where you happen to be watching live and exclusive on YouTube, thanks to Fakata Māori, Māori Active. Big kia ora. Great to have you on board. We welcome you. And, and that was the end of the Senior Open pool for the moment. So now our next games will be the women. The wahini. Yes. We've had the tane. Now it's time to get the wahini. And now we've got Havelock versus Karamu. So I've got my old Karamu team versus Havelock. Two evenly matched teams Haley? No I would not say Havelock have had a really really good start of the season a lot of their players as you can see they've got pink backs of their boats that means they are National League players so they represent Hawke's Bay whereas Karamu only have one Hawke's Bay player so a little bit a little bit more stacked a little bit more stacked on the Havelock side, but you never know. You never know what could come out. So Karamu in the green on the right side of your screen. And you've got Havelock in the white and the pink, really. Havelock in the white and pink on your left. So a bit of local rivalry here, oh, one might say. 100% every time um, there's a grand final. It's most likely Havelock and Kadamu. Not this year, unfortunately, but normally it is. So it's going to be interesting to see what both can, both teams can put forward here. And forgive me for using the expression, but you're an old girl of Kadamu? Yes, yep. But you're not an old girl? No, no. not you. <laughs> <laughs> Although I do feel old being here. <laughs> <laughs> I must, you know, excite you to see these 
young players, the young Tane, the young yes. Wahini, you know, really coming to the fore and, and showing their wares. Here we go. Who Here's got? the charge. Kira versus Elise Teddy. Who's it going to be? And it's Kira from Havelock North passes it off to Megan Broad, who was a member of the under-21 Worlds team that went to France last year. They got a nice, fat, shiny trophy for winning that. That's not all bad, is it? No, it's 100% good. Oh, Kira. Open goal. Beautiful. Smashed it. Havelock North <laughs> on the board early. And who scored that goal there, Hayley? That was Kira Buchanan, number six for Havelock North. And we've got number three, number eight from Havelock going forward from that. It indicates that this will be a high scoring game on Havelock's end. But kind of what do they have? Megan, off she goes. Chest pass coming. Just an easy shot. Two ahead, 2-0. Two and we're not even two minutes in. No. It's gonna it's gonna be a high scoring game. <laughs> but kind of mood, they won't give up. Always got that spirit. Up the moo. Up the moo. Up the moo. What can they do with it? Passes it to Elise Teddy. Megan's all over her. What can she do? And that is a that is a hapa ahoy, that's a paddle foul, so Megan Broad just put her paddle just a little bit too close to Elise Titty there. And here comes Holly Andrews, another fast break for Havelock. Got Jordan Dunford and Megan there waiting. Elise going to goal. Easy and as you like. Easy as you like. The takes the score to... You've got a replay here on the cam. 3-0 up. Have like a one in those goals. They're ready for it. What kind of we got in the bag? They're gonna pull something out now. Hasn't worked in the past. Gonna try something different. Here comes a sub for Kadamu. On. And Havoc's ball again. Just not a big enough pass there. Oh, and she gets it back. Good job, at least, from Kanemu. So Kanemu's ball now. Passes it up. Better form from Kanemu here. Here they get, are. Here's an opportunity, Hayley. This yep, is what they're looking the for. Pitch. They just need to get the ball in their hands and get a bit comfortable with pressing forward and give themselves a chance. A couple of shots on goal wouldn't go astray, but no, turned over. That's an unfortunate one. Here's Geordie Thompson. They have Lock North. And oh, just a bit over just the top. A little bit over. A lot of players here having too many wheat books for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Kadamu's ball. Havelock retreating to defence. But I'm sure they'll push up soon. And here is Bella Kasson from Kadamu with the ball on your screen. And if you're just joining us, Fano, we are here at the Māori 10 Sports Park at the New Zealand Secondary School Nationals. This is Karamu High School versus Havelock High School for the women's grade. And Havelock are leading 3-0. What a foul it seems on the six. So it's going to be Karamu ball. Okay, they're up here now. What are they going to do with it? Safe passes, make sure they go to hands. Bit of a block there from Havelock, good pressure. Karamu trying to find that first goal. Getting close to halfway through this first half. Havelock North came out of the blocks quick, scored three goals. Karamu has settled it though. Made it look easy, but Karamu, as you touch on Hayley, that spirit they have. They're not giving up, here's an opportunity. For number seven for Karamu. No, oh, just turned over slightly. And here, have a lot go. 
Jordy with the ball. Up to Kira, number six. What's she going to do with it? She's got Taylor there. Up and yeah. in. Wow. Karabu take it to... Havelock. Havelock. <laughs> but Kira's unfortunately, goal. Havelock too strong there. Yep. 4-0 up. Yep. Havelock filled with those representative players. So they know what they're doing. They've had the experience. They're ready for it. They come. Just a bit grouped, Karamu, but now they're looking good. But the hustle, though, from Havelock North is Next not... Next to none. Yeah, they're, they're it's, it's not, re ball. not relenting, is it? No. They'll be wanting goals this game. They're currently sitting third on the table, so they're wanting that goal difference up. There's a pop-over now. Easy oh, as you like, but good defence there for Karamu. Who was that under the goal there? That is Bella Kassin under the goal for Karamu. Yep. Great effort there. Good shot from Havelock, though. Havelock with the corner. Pressing on again. Oh. And good defence once more for Karamu. Havelock corner. Karamu going to put that defence in. Oh, possible turnover for Karamu. Can they get um, the hammer down and press forward? Havelock too fast. No, they get the turnover, unfortunately, when it looked likely for Karamu. Oh, here we go. Megan Brawl with the ball. Oh, Just a little bit high. Just a little bit high. Karamu yeah. ball. Look, a statement of the obvious is that Havelock North are ahead 4 to nil clearly, but they still have to maintain their shape and structure, don't they? Yes, 100%. How important is that? Maintaining your shape and structure. Oh, it's huge. Once you're 4 nil up, I guess for Karamu, oh, for uh, Havelock, they still want to make sure press forward because imagine if they just let their foot off the, the accelerator Karamu would score goals in them, it's not what they want at all. Sure. Righto, let's see what happens here, Karamu, they want to get on the board, they can get on the board, they can they just need to believe in themselves and just press forward, find some space but they're not giving up though, which we like that Karamu spirit. Exactly here they go they're just at the wrong end of the pitch at the moment. They're finding players, and that's what they need to do is just get a bit of interchange going and see if they oh, can get one of their teams to drive forward. Here we go. Go, Katamu. Oh, go, Katamu. Let's see what you can do. <laughs> go, Elise. Oh. Lovely oh. ball, just defeated, but still with Katamu, not quite. Oh, that was a good block from Kira there. Good opportunity from Katamu, though. Seems like Havelock could just put a little less pressure on them. Havelock North again, under two minutes left. They're up 4-0. And a turnover to Kadamu, but... Good oh, defence. Un unfortunately, she took it out herself there. So Havelock corner. Havelock North. With the ball. Good feed to Holly. Is she going to... Oh, Up and in. beautiful from Holly Andrews, number two for Havelock North. Here's a little replay here. They certainly showed a great deal of patience, didn't they, Holly? 100%. That's what Canupolo is all about, is patience. Because as you would have seen, lots and lots of pedal blocks. So you want to make sure there's not many pedals in your way. So that means you only have to beat the goalie's pedal. Oh, we've got a full, almost a full press here from Karamu. What's a full press? Talk me through that. So uh, when I say to the term press, it's when you go man to man. Oh, yeah, man on man. Yeah. For sure. So when I say they haven't got a full press, it's because they've left one in the goalkeeping space just in case Karamu get close. Just for our viewers, perhaps, getting across Puro Waka for the first time. There, have a lot of go. Crusade. Up they go. It's a combination, to be fair, of basketball and American football in some respects. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and off there. of metal work. Yeah, whenever yeah. I um, explain Knupolo to people, say basketball in the water. <laughs> yes. So you don't necessarily have positions. It's a very, very fluid game. Anyone can go anywhere. Oh, and here we go. Karamu with a possible... Can they, can they get on the board with the stroke of halftime imminent? 
Not quite. Not quite. No, it's going to roll over. It's going to be half time. And Havelock North go to the sheds ahead 5 to nil. Very convincing. They came out of the blocks at 150 kilometres an hour. They did. Well drilled, well executed, yep. and well played, and they deserve their lead. However, Karamu Spirit came <laughs> to the fore. They never gave up. They're there was not some, giving no, up. No, there was good defence under the goal. Yeah. They were able to block. There was an opportunity to get a turnover. It wasn't quite executed, but they no. take great heart from that. 100%. Karamu in their development stage. They had a lot of players leave their team. So a lot of young players in this team, whereas Havelock got quite a old, older team, but both teams showing good spirit. Havelock put their foot off the accelerator just at the end, so they'll be wanting to start off the blocks hot. And here's on your screen Havelock going from their team chat. What would be the message to them from their coaches? Uh, I would presume just to go hard. Yeah, 5 0 up. I mean, five. what do you do? Do you change anything? Do you nah. try and. Nah, nah, nah. Nah, you here want, we go. Want, Here's the charge. The goals. <laughs> Here's Megan Broad. Nicely done, Megan. Dribbles it to herself. She's got her team coming up. She's going to have a look. Cheers, a look. Lovely goal, Megan. Gets the charge, slips in. It's what you want. And she opens the account for Havelock in the second half, and they take the score 6 to 0. Yep, setting that pace early, always important, even the first half and the second half. First team to score, really important. Here we go, Kanamu just taking it up. What can Kanamu do? Keep it safe, hopefully. And there's a block. Good block by Havelock. They're not done yet. Nope, and not, off they go. Not by any stretch of the imagination. Once more, Havelock, too good. Too good. So I've started a lot better this time. So there's Kira quick in the water, so Megan's got time to paddle towards it. Megan going for that foul a little bit there, but just decided to shoot in the end. Easy as you like. Easy as you like. So Havelock have started really well, so hopefully they keep that pressure on the whole time. They don't want to let standard slip, whereas Karamu, they'll be saying, hey, let's get a goal. Let's get a goal, yep. I mean, our goal was to get a goal, <laughs> is what they'll be saying. Oh, 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 it's unfortunate. It's a foul from Karamu. So, so Karamu in the green, and they're going from left to right. They're on defence. Havelock North in the white with the pink on the boats. Their offence right now. They're up 7-0, oh. and just wide, nearly took it to 8. The ball goes back to Karamu. It's that intimidation from Karamu. <laughs> Gosh, it'd be great if we could see Karamu get a goal. That would be great. I'm sure the crowd here will erupt. <laughs> There's been great support for all the teams that are playing here from yep. the sideline. Parents, Fano. Two local teams here, so we'll have lots of Fano and friends here. Yep, grandparents. All here. Very much a family affair, that's for sure. Havelock starting early. Kanamu in their own half. Here's an opportunity now. Here they go. Kanamu, what can they conjure up? Can they pull a rabbit out of the hat? Nice pass. Oh. Nice pass. Who wants it? Kanamu have it, I think. Yes, they have. That was good technique. Oh. That's no, ah, commentator's curse turned <laughs> over. That is Jordan from Havelock. Megan with the ball, going to send up to Kira. But we've got a goal here. There, can she stop anything? Nope. Nice little lob shot from Kira there. And we see in our replay, doesn't even need a pedal. Off she goes. And that makes it 8 0 to Havelock. So Karamu just need to keep their chins up. They're not down by any stretch. No. They just need to focus on retaining position. Yep. Playing it on the right part of the pitch and just getting one goal. That's all they need. <laughs> That's all they need. And some balls to hands would be good. There we go. Keep Lovely. calm. And that was unfortunate there. Havelock's ball again. 
And Kirby Cannon again. Just keeping it in front of her as she comes forward. She leaning back shot. and lofted and easy as you Lovely. like. Kira has got lots of goals in this game as we see. Here's another one from her. As you can see from her pink boat, she plays for the Hawke's Bay Torvi team, which are in the New Zealand National A-League. So she's very experienced. She knows what she's doing. Just lob that goal in. Here we go. Oh, oh cut a move. Oh. Sophia, the goalie, said, no, nope, I'm keeping that ball. Here's Kira again. I feel like I'm saying your name all the time. <laughs> Up and oh, in. And a good block from number eight from Kadamu. Makes it a corner. Uh, Paora Coconut there. And, of course, the New Zealand Paddle Ferns came third in the World Games in Alabama in 2022 and it's the first time a New Zealand canoe polo team has ever won a medal at the World Games. How special is that? Yeah, that's awesome. And as I said earlier, Megan Broad, who is not on your screen at the moment, at the moment she was in the winning team for the World Championships for under-21s, which is outstanding. Oh, and have we missed a goal there? We've missed a goal there. Whoopsies. But that's all right. It makes it nine. <laughs> nine nil. And Havelock are not letting anything slip. They're, they're maintaining want... the pressure, aren't they? Yeah, they're wanting those goals now. Yeah. So unlike the first half, they're just staying on them, which is the best thing to do. Yeah. And a foul there against Havelock. So Katamu's ball. What can they do with it? Let's go, Katamu. Let's see if you can find the back of the net. Under four minutes left in the second half. Have look north ahead. Here we go. Nine to nil. Got some players under goal. Oh, that Opportunity was a block. not quite taken. Still live there if they want it, Katamu. Whistle goes. And that is Havelock's ball. Havelock's ball. Incidentally, the first recorded game of canoe polo in New Zealand occurred in September, way back in 1961 in Gisborne, oh. on the Tūranga Nanganui River between Waroa and the Gisborne Canoe Clubs. Wow. Oh. oh, good block there. But if my memory serves me correctly, and I wasn't there, but it was played <laughs> in canvas canoes, that four oh. players per team, they scored a goal by getting a ball inside a moored tractor in a tube. Oh my god. Look at where the game's come, How Hayley. the game has evolved. It has evolved, progressed, and wow. Under three minutes left. Pura Waka action from Mighty Ten Park in Here Tonga in Hastings. Great to have you on board, and big thanks to Whakata Māori, Māori Active, for bringing you these pictures live and exclusive on the YouTube channel. And Havelock have made it that special number, 10. They're into double figures. They're in double figures. Two minutes left. I think they've still got a couple more in them. Safe passes. Here goes Megan Broad, number eight again. She can have a look early. How many goals has she scored in this game? Oh. I've lost track. So many. <laughs> Her and number six, Kira, have been on fire. Here's a replay. So good. Pass up by Holly Andrews. Megan, Kulkaham and collected. Here's a little look. Perfect execution. Let's go, Karamu. Less than two minutes left. Let's get one in the Let's bin. Come one. on, Karamu. Oh, and here we here go. Here we go. Here's an opportunity. Oh, Can she get the ball? Not quite. Stink. <laughs> oh, and here's a, here's a foul for Karamu. So, unfortunately, Holly Andrews just hit her in the cockpit, which is the side of the boat. You can't do that. So, we'll, we'll take it, Karamu. We're pretty close. We've got a potential shot opportunity. That was a hapa. Let's see what Karamu can do. Still in position, Karamu. Let's see if they can get one. Come on, Karamu. 
A minute left. Okay. Let's go, Karamu. Get one. Least here with the ball. Oh, no, That's not quite. It goes there's loose. Fear there's going to be. Oh. Opportunity lost. Open space there. So Karamu can get it if they want Turn it. Turn ball. Karamu's yes, ball. Can. Nice. Nice interchange there for Karamu. Let's go. Let's go. Get one. Oh, and we've got someone who's unfortunately fallen out. That's okay. Karamu continues. Let's go, Karamu. Getting close to 30 seconds left. Here we go. Yes. Up and over. Go, go, go Karamu. Well. Shoot. Oh, oh, hard luck. That, that was, was awesome that they got themselves in that opportunity with four players. I love that spirit. And that was probably their best attacking opportunity of the game. They weren't quite able to finish, but as you say, Hayley, great spirit, 100%. great commitment. And, here and got nearly got the, uh, the rewards for the mahi, but not quite. But they certainly showed that spirit that you spoke of. And Have a look north. Last one. 11 nil up. Leaning back, having a look, and that takes it to 12. Good job, Jordan Dunford. And that, here we see a little replay on that. Megan telling her, shoot it, shoot it. She gets it in, no doubt about that. So we have on our scoreboard 12 nil to Havelock North High. Yep. The official scoreboard says 11. Yes, but it will be 12 because they just haven't updated it in the last two seconds. Absolutely. And Havelock North with five ahead at half time. And they scored seven goals in the second half in a yep. very dominant and 100%. committed display. Well deserved. But Karamu, big ups, Karamu. Big Great up. spirit shown by the, the young Wahini there. They really dug deep and didn't give up. So big ups to them. And here, the next game, I'm very excited for this one as well. Here we've got Napier Girls in the white and blue on your left and Middleton Grange, which comes from Christchurch, on your right. So as you can see, we've also got some Hawke's Bay representatives with the pink boats in Napier Girls. And we've also got some Nemesis, which is the Christchurch women's A-grade team in the... Oh, we're in pink. Oh. Normally, Middleton Grange are red, but they seem to be wearing pink. Lovely, lovely. See, Middleton Grange earlier um, drew with Havelock, so this is going to be a very interesting game. And Napier Girls only Napier Girls only lost by one to Havelock, so very excited for this one. Good stuff. Righto, two teams from opposing islands of Aotearoa, Napier Girls and Middleton Grange. Napier versus Christchurch. Yep. This is going to be a doozy, I feel. On your screen, as you can see, Napier Girls on the left and Middleton Grange on the right. Poro Waka action from Mighty Ten Park in Here Tonga. Hastings, North Island of Aotearoa. Kia ora, wherever you're joining us from. Live and exclusive on the YouTube channel, courtesy of Fakata Māori, Māori Active. Here we've got a charge start, so we've got Grace Hendrickson from Napier Girls. And here we go. This is number three from Middleton Ball's Grange. just drifted to the right as we see it, so maybe an advantage to Middleton Grange. Let's see. Came off the bow of the boat, but no. Hendrickson. Napier Girls have it, yeah. Hendrickson in possession. Napier Girls. Just having a look at options in this early stage of the game. Henriksen goes in, followed by Ronberg. Number five, Reese with the ball. She takes a dribble. What's she going to do with it? Looking up. In pass. Back again. It's good tactics. Just allowing the team to get set. Plenty of time left on the Karakakuru, the clock shot. The shot clock. <laughs> Here's Danny Peterson with the ball. Dribbles up. What's she going to do with it? 
passes it off. Oh, good shot from number eight from Napier Girls. Here we see a replay. Danny dribbles it. Option there. Beautiful. And just a reminder that if you are joining us for the first time, two halves of ten minutes, five players battle it out, score a goal, which is suspended above the water at the end of what is known as the pitch. Pretty simple sort of game, although there are a few technical aspects when it comes to fouls. And here we've got a potential fast break. Number two chasing Reese down. And great intercept by Middleton Grange. They shut that down fast, quick. They don't want any goals scored against them. Napier Gills, one goal to the good. Middleton Grange looking to reply. And Meg Rongberg with the ball. Potential fast break here. Passes it off to her captain, Grace Hendrickson. Oh, unlucky. Pass up. Oh, here we go. Napier girls ball. Reese has got no support though. She's come to a big pass back. And great defence from Middleton Grange. Unfortunately, that is a corner though. So Napier girls ball. So as you can see on your screen, Grace Hendrickson, just like some of the players in the Havelock team, she's also in the Hawke's Bay Torvey team, which is the Hawke's Bay National League women's A-grade team. Blocked there. It was a good shot from Napier Gills, but blocked by Middleton Grange. And Reese also in the team I just mentioned for Grace. So I've got some teammates in here, so they'll be working together. And conditions improving as the day progresses. We started at 14 degrees, 19 degrees now, and wind just at 14 kilometres. Oh, great work, Reese! Lovely shot. Awesome work by Danny to take that pressure. Good pass by Peterson. Goes to Reese. Beautiful, and that's in. So that is two goals to Napier girls and nil for Middleton Grange. But they've got the ball now. What, they, what can they do with it? Middleton Grange with the ball. Trying Good to find pass. some space on that far side. Passes it over to Caitlin. Ball not going to hand. And that is a turnover from Molly. Here we go. Peterson to Hendrickson. Up to Reese. Opportunity. Opportunity for Napier Girls. Good patience. She could shoot it early if she would like to. But she chooses for the better good. Nice hands right there, but blocked by Middleton Grange. And beautiful work from number five, Caitlin, from Middleton Grange. Passes it back for security to number three. And off your screen, the Napier girls' defenders have got back in position to get themselves ready for any attack by Middleton Grange. Oh, turnover. Oh, and turnover again, double turnovers, but Middleton Grange keep the ball. So Middleton Grange travelling all the way out from Christchurch, hoping to bring some medals home for their family in Fano. 
and a good feed. Up oh, over. not quite. Wow, the Nearly bar. In. The bar's yeah. not been kind to players today. We've seen a bit of that. We have, there, haven't we, Haley? Goodness me. Two 0 down, oh. Middleton Grange. They were looking to get their first points on the board there, their first goal. Less than four minutes left in this first half. It's been a bit of an arm wrestle, to be fair. It has. Even though Napier girls are winning, Middleton Grange right there. They just haven't been able to turn their opportunities when they presented themselves into a goal. But there's still a lot of real estate ahead of them, so that can change so quickly. Napier girls pressuring out. Oh my gosh, that was number five, Caitlin for Middleton Grange. I hope we see a replay on that because that was yes, outstanding. We do. Look at that, they needed it, they wanted it, and they got it. Talk us through this, Hayley. So she takes a dribble. No one's going to expect her to shoot from there, so she goes for it and top bar in. That's the best feeling for a player to get that. Difficult angle, too, my friend. 100%. No way the goalie's paddle can get there. So that's yes. how it was able to get in so far. 2 1, Nate, your girls ahead. Anyone's this is game. shaping up to be a real arm wrestle, a ding-dong battle, one might say. Maybe girls on attack. Good safety pass. Middleton Grange coming out. And good block there. Maybe girls just looking for an opening. Close to two minutes left in this first half. And they've got five seconds on the shot clock, so they need to shoot it, which no. they do. Oh, and here's Grace Hendrickson, the captain, and blocked. So the Karaka Kuru, the shot clock, gives you 60 seconds to get it in the back of the net. And if you don't pull the trigger within that time frame, it is a turnover to the opposition. Here's Napier Gills. Napier girls working hard in that middle. Danny working in there. What are Napier girls going to do with it? They throw a pass in front. Going to do a numbers play. And a good feed. Oh, Up and just, just over, over the top. Middleton Grange ball. Two ones, Napier girls. They're going to be wanting to convert in this last minute to make it two wall for half time. Under a minute left now in this first half. Napier girls ahead, two to one. Middleton Grange looking to get the equaliser before the half-time whistle. Let's see what they can create. 32 seconds left on the Karaka Kuru. Napier girls coming out for pressure on. Possible turnover coming. Good pressure taking from Middleton Grange. Opportunity now, shot, and good feed. Leaning back, trying to find that space, oh, that opportunity. Great block for number two for Napier Girls, Molly. And here's an opportunity, Grace Hendrickson. They're turning defence into offence, clock's running down. She's going to have a shot. Ten seconds, can she pull oh, the trigger? Good Let's power see. there from Grace. Leaning back, up, oh ah, my the middle work gosh. again. The middle work again the towards the opportunity there for Napier Gills. That was a lovely shot though, just unfortunately didn't get in. And it's 2-1 at half time. 2-1 at half time. Gosh. Far out. This what is anyone's game. game. Anyone's game, which is so exciting. This is a real arm wrestle we've got here from the free-flowing open game, previously the high-scoring one that we saw between Havelock North and Karamu. Now we're down to an arm wrestle. Yep. A real slugfest, as they say in <laughs> boxing. <laughs> yeah, we just heard the coach of Middleton Grange telling them just to have patience and to use the shot clock. So, Napier girls, they'll be looking to get a couple more. But also for Napier girls, they should just be conscious of that shot clock as well because I've had a couple times so I've needed to shoot the last second. Any change of tactics needed for either side, Hayley? Um... Not really. They're both doing well. They've both had their own team 
team talks by respective coaches, so they've already would have known what to do. And we've got a charge start. Oh, and a, a illegal charge start. Okay. So number what? three from Middleton Grange just started too early. Broke early. Yep. Yep. Sure. It's like the sprinter at the start of a hundred meters before the clack 100%. goes to the gun. They've jumped the line. Hundred percent. Yep. And kia ora if you're just joining us at the New Zealand Secondary School Nationals here for Kru Polo. We've got Napier Girls versus Middleton Grange in the Senior Girls Division. Of course, Middleton Grange from Christchurch. Oh, Up good block again. there. And we've got a timeout and possible cards. Uh-oh. What's happened there? Is that unsportsmanlike behaviour perhaps, was it, or...? Um, well, he hasn't like done. Man, I don't know. He has not done a call, so I'm not sure there. But it was a green card shown, that, though, right? Yes, it was a green card shown. That's very, very unfortunate because that means Middleton Grange are now down to four players. Makes it difficult. Makes it very difficult. So conversion coming from Happy Girls, I would think. Leaning back up and oh off the middle work gosh. once more. The bar's not being friendly today. Not at all. They might have to replace it with all the dents it's received. <laughs> yep. How long are Middleton Grange down to four players? So they will be down to four players up until Napier Girls score, so it's a power play situation. Got you, got you. But if Napier Girls don't score, it's a maximum time of two minutes. Two minutes, got you. But with four players, Napier Girls are looking likely to score 5v4. But Middleton Grange, they haven't scored yet, so their defence is working hard. This is where the hustle comes into play. They really find what they're made of when it comes to defending with four players on the pitch. Hendrickson, lovely goal. So that means that Middleton Grange will be able to get a player on. Here comes the replay, number eight. Grace, she sees it, she sees the opportunity, gets the ball, has a look, converts. Touches the pedal, but too strong. So Middleton Grange with the ball now. Because Napier Girls just scored under the power play, they have now got five players again. And Napier Girls ahead, three goals to one, the second half. Good look there by Caitlin. Just not enough wheat bits on that one. And Napier Girls with a fast break opportunity. Note your girls in position. They're two to the good. And we're getting close to under seven minutes in the second half. A good feed to Reese. Oh, and beautiful. Again. Amazing feed from, Re from Meg Rongberg. She takes a dribble. You see Reese there in the middle just waiting for it. She calls for it, she calls for it. That is beautiful. Converts. Great goal. Great goal. They're up 2-1 at half time, Napier Girls. They've added two to the score. It's 4-1. to one, And they look in complete control at this stage. However, Middleton Grange... They're sneaky, though. They're dangerous. ...have a great attitude, a never-say-die attitude. And I would expect them to get a couple in the back of the net before too long but no and yeah whistle's gone yeah. right there we go so Middleton Grange they retain position there's good chatter out there they're talking tactics they're trying to get a move pull getting the players in the right spot so that they can then press forward and get their offense into action here they go so Napier girls a little bit untidy out. oh here comes number seven wow the wheels on her as well Scoops it up, keeps it forward of the bow of the boat, of the canoe there. Passes it off to her teammate, Grace Hendrickson, having a look. Great goal. Lovely. Great goal. Yeah, Grace has had a cracker of a game, the captain. Here's the replay here. Has a look. Beautiful. And also, awesome work from number two, Molly, for dragging that player away from the goal. <laughs> Drawing them away, yep. absolutely. Yeah, the old decoy kind of play. So at Middleton Grange. 5-1, Napier Girls. Still five minutes left, still anyone's game. Three unanswered goals in the second half for Napier Girls. 
looking very strong at the moment and very much in control. And as you can see on your screen, Fano, we've got Napier girls running more of a attacking play with those blue boats up there. Middleton Grange. They want to see if they can find the back. And here's Here an opportunity. Go. And just oh. wide. Goodness me. Awesome play, though. Really good options. They had two people there. Nappy girls with the ball now. A lot of chat there going on from Danny, who's the goalie. Middleton Grange coming out. Good pressure. Passes it off to Captain. And good shot there, but good block from Middleton Grange. In complete control here, Napier Gills. Where's that oh, ball? Middleton Grange sure. had it, but Napier Gills oh. have got it now. And here's a little bit of Paoro Taruri, open space. Passes it off to Grace. With the Aputa. Good chat there from Danny, letting her teammate know, I'm here, I'm here. Good pass over. What magic is coming. Oh, good, good defence, oh. Middleton Grange. Under the goal, oh. but ricochets down and then back in. Yep, Grace so. Hendrickson knew it was coming. We'll get a replay on this. Easy as you like, look at this. The ball's loose. Comes to the attacking player, blocked. And wow, beautiful goal. So in a position like that, the attacking player put a bit of power in because you can get a deflection, it can end yep. up going into the goal, which we saw a couple of times there. 100%. So well done, Napier girls. They've got their foot to the middle and they're driving it like it's stolen. <laughs> like it's stolen. <laughs> Not that we encourage or condone that in any way, shape or form. No. <laughs> We've got a paora coconut, looks like, down in that corner. Getting close to the two-minute mark of oh, this game. Oh, good block. Great Takes block. It another corner. Another paora coconut. And talk from the coach telling Middleton Grange to not be so stationary, to get that some fluid, fluidity in their movements. Here we go, Milton Grange. Can they find the back of the net? Two-minute mark approaching. Let's see what they have in the kit bag. What can they pull out? Awesome work from Molly, number two. No, Nate, your girl's too strong. Very well drilled, very well organised, Nate, your girls. Mm. A lot of trainings, a lot of early morning trains before school, I can see doing that. Reflected in the score, of course. Got to be said, though, Milton Grange have toiled very well. Yes. They, they haven't given up. They've brought a bit of hustle, a bit of bustle. 100%. And certainly shown their commitment here. Napier girls, can they get another one? Good push there. Getting close to the one-minute mark. Left in this game as the sun so. really shines here. At Mitre 10 Park in Here Tonga Hastings. So full press here. So every player's got someone on them. Ball loose. Oh. Whistle gone. Just gotta be careful about that one. That was <laughs> a that almost looked like a hapa ahoy. It looked almost yep. like a paddle on the on the arm. Up oh. a bit short. Grace Hendricks from the goal. Less than a minute gone. Oh wide. The oh. clock's ticking. And a deflection on that, so I'll get a corner. So Napier girls have scored four unanswered goals in the second half. They've really shown their mettle here, and they're definite contenders, aren't they? 100%. Napier girls 
easy as you like. Oh, no one home, go. just a lob up Lovely. and in. And that is the icing on the cake for Napier Girls. Napier Girls really showing why they are top of the table here at the New Zealand Secondary School Nationals. That takes the score 7-1 to one as the clock runs down and they scored five unanswered goals in the second half. And it looks inevitable. The whistle will go and Napier Girls will take this game seven goals to one in what has been a very dominant, polished display of Poro Waka, mm. canoe polo. Amazing effort though from Middleton Grange. You wouldn't know that was the score line. They just kept going, no hesitation. Lovely effort from them. That was a great, great game. Two really big contenders. And here we've got another big game. As you can see, got some teams paddling onto the pitch as Napier Girls and Middleton Grange come off. So we've got Palms North Girls High School versus Teradale High School. You see Teradale in those bright, bright colours. The yellow and the blue, they're standing out on your left side of your screen. And we're actually going to take a little bit of a break, honey, <laughs> and recharge the batteries, and we didn't want to curb your enthusiasm. <laughs> Let's stream like that, but we're going to take a break, recharge, and yes. we'll be back with you shortly with this fantastic Poro Waka Polo Canoe polo action here from Maritime Park in Herotonga Hastings. Kia ora.